welcome to Gearlock Farms. This afternoon we're going to be doing some spring tillage here on a, a piece that we're going to, we're seeding it down in the spring, correct? That's the plan. Yeah. We're going to seed this one down. It's about 12 acres. So uh, how many years has it been in corn? Maybe two years. Usually that's what I, we do at our rotation. About eight years of hay, two years of corn, and then we seed it back down. So it might depend on the field some years maybe six years it depends on what's there but the fields are so steep we don't we don't like to work them up any more often than, than we really need to so speaking of that we're using the 7810 john deere and we're pulling a, a Deutz alice chisel plow and how many feet is that is that a feet well it's a seven shank oh it must be about a 10 10 11 feet you know but it's enough in these hills I mean, the soil is very mellow this year, but I noticed last fall I did a little bit of subsoiling just on those high traffic areas after we took the corn stalks off, and it pulled very, very hard. That was right before it froze up. And this spring I did a little bit more, just a couple acres there and a, down by the buildings, and it threw there just like slicing through butter. I was in the sea range, I was, you know. I think with our spring thaw, it was so gradual this year, and the frost came out gradually that the soil yeah. was very, very loose this year. There wasn't much frost, and, and but there was an awful lot of water and the snow that there was. And yes, it came in out, almost everything soaked in. At least in our area, but then you go maybe two and a half, three hours north, and that was, I think, a very quick thaw this year. It's been 80 degrees for the last two days or three. And then the north side, I can still see snow a little bit from them drifts. But it's a good spring so far. This piece is kind of steep. It's not very wide. It's gonna leave some waterways. And then what we do is we pray that we don't get a heavy rain until it, you know, starts growing. Yeah, well, get get good and established. Yeah, you get a little. Even if it's just an inch or two tall, it makes a huge difference. It's just something. Something that kind of helped hold on to things, but so back to tillage talk. So you're using the the digger right now, or the chisel plow. Chisel, chisel plow, I guess you would call it. That yeah. too. The terms when it comes to tillage equipment, they're all over the board. Oh, I suppose it depends on where you came from. But anyways, some more aggressive tillage here to start off with. And like we were saying, we don't dig everything up every single year. You've seen videos of us disking, mowboard plowing, things like that, but. He still plants some corn no-till when uh, we're bringing things out of sod and we're putting it back into corn. And so really the big tillage is in the bottoms where it's heavy wet soils, the manure, and it's cold, it's cold ground. Like last year the soils were very cold in the spring, so that was very necessary. And then with the rye too, there's a big debate between is it better to spray it and kill it off or to dig it up while it's green? And um, I'm sure you all have your opinions too, so leave comments about that. But we've uh, you've kind of done both. You've had to spray off rye after you've well, and that and that's the thing. Some years it, it depends on the weather conditions. If it's any very quite right, or if you get certain conditions, it'll uh, start to come back, and you still might end up going through a little roundup anyway. Yep. I try to avoid all that. I think the best is to till it in because they are heavy bottoms. They are there's rye. They're manured, a lot of straw manures and stuff, and they open that soil up. So it's really, once we till it up, within two days, it's planted again. Yeah. So it's it's not like it's laying barren for six months. So that, and then you got all that humus, all that, all them sod clumps and stuff. Um, yeah. So with our with our alfalfa and our haze and then our cover crop on our corn on corn ground, we can get away with with doing some more heavy tillage on those pieces. I think it's good to till till these fields. I mean, if they're only tilled up once in eight years, that's not that's not overdoing it. I stirred the soil a little bit after we've been manuring them and manuring them, and uh, you know, you do get a little bit of compaction because what happens on fields like this, for instance, all the traffic is right on the crest of the hill. We bring our corn stock bales down, our loads of hay down, everything. You drive to the the most you know leveler spot to get your equipment in and out. So that ends up being almost like used like a road. So what I did in the fall, that's where I did my subsoiling, my deep tooth. I went, I just went across the top of the hill about five passes where we do all our traffic. 
otherwise I don't think it was necessary. We don't have that big of equipment. We don't use trucks. We don't have trucks hauling our manure or anything like that. I think of a, a farm like this, if if it was to be continuously row cropped, we'd have to switch to just no-till oh, strictly. God. There's no way a guy would get away with tilling this stuff up every single year and leaving it in row crops. And a lot of small fields and stuff too, so it all has its place. You know? So this new seeding field, We'll get this aggressive tillage right away. You'll probably run the disc across the disc or, or dig. I'm thinking right now, look at that soap, probably just a digger. Okay. It's a lighter machine, it pulls easier, and there's still a harrow on behind both of them. So if this was like sod we were plowing, like last year when we plowed the rye, I like to use the disc. So the disc does it it doesn't work them sod bunches back up on top again. Where here there is none of that, so we can we can just use the digger and um, just basically groom it up, might even go over it with the disc. We do have a no-till drill, we're still gonna do our tillage. And, uh, and like Dad was saying, leaving the hay in for, you know, five plus years, eight years, uh, we, we wanna make sure we have a nice level seed bed and a nice field, a nice blank canvas to make hay on. It's kinda like guys harvesting soybeans. We wanna be able to to cut the fields and have it nice and smooth and level and not it's easier on all the other equipment after the fact breaking and all that so there's only there's only one downside to it is if you happen to get that that crazy rain right after you finished seeding and and it's happened maybe once out of 10 years you get caught that way but there's no way to avoid that last year on the other new seeding we dragged that before and after. Yeah, right? just to break it up more. Cause that field there, that was in sod for over 20 years. And you know, you pastured and um, manured every spring, heavily manured. And then corn for Then we'd two. make hay, yep. And then we had two years of corn. So the first year of corn, we didn't do any tillage. We just no-tilled it in there, which turned out pretty good. Well, this is actually the top of what we call Suicide Hill. It's just a nickname we gave to this hill. And believe me, it's way steeper than the camera's showing you. And uh, you can see our whole homestead here, our building site off to one side. And standing on top of this, it's, it's uh, almost like standing on a mountain. And the other side is even steeper yet, where it dies down into a uh, neighboring homestead. And where there's a the majority of the leveler, heavy, flat ground in our area, in our valley here anyway. Neat place to uh, do a little uh, sightseeing or get a good view. It has its neat advantages. The plan is now that Dad's got the field opened up and decided where he wants the waterways, I'm going to take over and, and finish off with the digger here. We're moving about six miles an hour, so hopefully we're able to hold that the whole time. Probably enough because. Uh, you got to turn or you got to take that digger out of the ground. Speaking of tillage and miles per hour, uh, let us know how fast you guys like to run with certain implements. I know like uh, vertical tillage or like, you know, turbo tillers are becoming very popular and we've kind of looked into that. Oh and yeah. I'd be interested to... We were talking about it last night. Yeah. And I think they are designed to move a little faster. It's kind of like a rotary tiller too, like when you're cultivating, you know, to, to kind of throw the soil a little bit. I think that'd be cool on some of these steeper fields to try some of that minimal tillage and still get a nice even seed. And then I think up. my planter could actually um, build no till into that. Yeah. You know, without ripping the, ripping the whole yeah, thing. It'd be, it'd be just enough to stir up the top top. Right. Top of and to kind of work that manure down in a little bit. We were at an agronomy meeting here and it's mostly uh, bioag, which is organic. organic. And they, they did strongly advise um, work the very close to the surface the two to two inches three inches thing and then if it need you need to get rid of any compaction leave the stuff in the middle alone that's where all your biology is going on which they still do agree occasionally you may have to just tear the whole thing up and start stir, over stir things up yeah. but i'm gonna take over dad's gonna start in on a different project and get some tillage done
time to think and I wanted to remind you guys that if you haven't already make sure to subscribe it uh, really helps us out along with liking the video if you enjoy it hit that thumbs up button we'd really appreciate it and uh, I don't think a lot of people know but we also have a P.O. box I kind of throw it in at the end of videos if you ever wanted to send us some mail we do have a P.O. box and uh, that's down in the, the, the description let us know what type of tillage is in your area kind of like I was briefly uh, touching on earlier we'd be interested to hear about it and uh, let us know how much horsepower you need per foot of tillage especially when it comes to vertical tillage we'd be interested to hear about how fast you're moving and and uh, what kind of tractors you're running and how much weight you got on the tractor and it'd be nice to get your guys' input on how big of a turbo tiller we should get and, and uh, what kind of tractor you need to pull it thanks in advance for that but we're gonna keep on uh, digging here and hopefully it doesn't uh, rain on us here the sky's looking pretty gloomy today or at least this afternoon anyways